I woke up one day and I realized that I shouldn't have sold all of my clone troopers from the last video. So with the new 501st battle pack released, I knew I had to do something. Let's see just how many 501st clones I can get in 24 hours. So in the first hour, I wanted to start with a tribute to the old 501st battle pack that just retired. So I had to pay my respects and bought two more for the army while they were on Amazon for only $22 each. This is a great start to something that might just be amazing. In hour two, I decided to create two more accurate ATRTs than what the set originally offers, and I built the Bark Speeders the way LEGO intends you to. I think these ATRTs look so much more clean, and the giant stud shooter is no longer present, which gives the build a more sleek look. A fine addition to the collection. In hour three, I actually got to go to Target and buy their last three 501st Specialist Battle Packs. I gave one to my brother because he wanted one, but I had an excellent start to the army with eight clone troopers ready and many more on the way. And have I ever mentioned the extra accessories you get in this set are awesome. You can put the macros on other clone troopers and use the blue attachments for custom 501st clone troopers like fives. Now to add some more firepower to our growing army, we have built the AV7 cannons from the two battle packs we already got, and these are the only two we will be building out of the multiple we will be getting in the video. These cannons are probably one of the best battle pack builds LEGO has ever made. It is for once a battle pack build that I think can fit right in with your bigger clone builds. I'm not ashamed to put it next to my ATTE for example, and as a smaller AV7 cannon, it could perhaps be used as backup or a harder target to hit while needing some more firepower. Now, in hour 5, I went on to Amazon and bought 10 more 501st Specialist Battle Packs. This was sadly all they had left in stock. Okay, truth be told, they took 5 days to arrive, not 5 hours. But for the sake of the video, we're in hour 10, and boy oh boy, are these boxes in terrible condition. Wow, these figures look stunning. I've never had a clone army from solely one battle pack or legion before, so this is a new feeling that I quite like, though I doubt my wallet feels the same way. And there are so many extra accessories. What a spectacular addition to our 501st army. But where will we store all of these clones after the video's over? Whoa, where did you come from? Everyone, welcome our sponsor, Scobo Design. Wait, do not skip. This is probably the most useful sponsorship you've ever seen on YouTube in your life. Are you sick and tired of buying new display cases as your collection grows and having to find new places to put all of them? Well, you're in luck, because the founder of Scobo Designs, Scott Bowers, had this problem too. As his collection would grow, he wouldn't have any room to put anything. So, he made this company and they create display cases that are modular and look stunning. This means that you can combine your display cases, which saves space and creates opportunity. For example, you can have a cruiser soaring in the sky and an ATTE storming through the ground, all in the same spot. We also have a minifigure display stand, which, contrary to other minifigure display stands, it does not separate the rows of minifigures, allowing for you to, for example, display different eras of minifigures. Here I have the Republic's Finest, the Separatists, and the Galactic Empire. I've also got a sweet green ninja display, as well as some other favorites from my collection. Now, you may be thinking, how is my beautiful Chrome Stormtrooper going to stay safe from all that pesky dust? Well, this display also includes a piece that can easily latch on and protect your collection. Now, here I will quickly explain the pros and cons of these displays. So, getting the negatives out of the way, the only issue I have with these displays is that the minifigure stands do not come with base plates to put your minifigures on, and the rows of minifigures have no um, optional stands to separate minifigures, so it could create instability when moving your display case around and um, you know storing it in different places. It could make figures fall and you have to fix your collection, so it can get a bit tedious. So that is my one issue I have with these displays. Now let's get back to the positives. First off, you can easily stack multiple display cases as your collection grows, and it saves you a crap ton of space because you won't have many different incompatible display stands all around your room, on shelves, etc. You can just have them all stacked on each other, which can look very, very cool. Second, the cases are extremely simple to assemble. It takes about 20 minutes tops to assemble the bigger display stands, and about only 10 minutes to 
assemble the minifigure stands, which is great. Lastly, these displays are extremely affordable for any collector, especially an amateur collector like myself. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to get yours today and also support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now you may be asking, what in the heck are you going to do with all of those other parts? Well, luckily some talented designers have already made a few alternate builds for this set. I'll be making two stun tanks using eight of these set's pieces thanks to design by BrickWizard59. And wow, these stun tanks look insane for such a limited piece count. There's a, only about 400 pieces per tank, so it shouldn't take you too long to build any of these. Let's add these to our growing army and move on. Now, in hour 12, I thought I should reuse some clones I got from the other video, so in case you haven't watched that video, here we have Kix with an awesome backpack and visor, Arc Trooper 5's Season 7 Echo, Apo, and Captain Rex. Even though I technically already have these, we need a command structure for our Going Fire First Army. In order to maintain peace, freedom, justice, and security, to my new empire. Oh, sorry, did I say my new empire? Right, well, here in hour 13, we have the chosen one himself stepping in with some 501st clone armor for protection. And I gotta say, he looks awesome wearing that armor. Wait, why did his eyes change color? Do I hear music? Okay, that was a little joke, but what isn't a joke is how awesome 332nd clone troopers look. Even though the only unique part about them is their helmets, it really means a lot to us Clone Wars fans that they are showing respect to one of the best Jedi of all time, Ahsoka Tano. And her Season 7 outfit, which is fittingly blue, looks awesome next to all these 501st Clone Troopers. Next up, we've got a small order of some 501st Jet Troopers, and while this isn't a huge difference in the army, it makes the Jet Troopers a more formidable squadron compared to their specialist counterparts. Now, in hour 16, I wanted to maintain the balance between minifigures and builds, so I added in an old 501st Republic fighter tank alternate build from last year, and it still holds up today despite it being a pretty fragile build and requiring battle pack parts that are no longer available on shelves. Speaking of Republic fighter tanks, let's add two fighter tanks that I recently got which are in regular Republic colors. That way, more of our troopers will be doing something other than marching into the Jedi Temp- I mean battle against the droids. Okay, I'll be honest, I only included these fighter tanks so I could go on a little rant about how I think they are so much cooler than most people give them credit for. A lot of people say they are too small and look odd, but I personally think it's a well-rounded build. Besides, what other Republic fighter tank can you find the parts for on the aftermarket for under $15? Now, in order to give the clones some lore-accurate opposition, I have included a Chinese knockoff of Rogue Jedi General Pong Krell, everyone's favorite character. I'm just kidding, I'm pretty sure he's the most hated character in Star Wars, second to only Rey Palpatine. But despite his cheap material, he looks like he's ready to slice down some of our favorite clone troopers with his two double-bladed lightsabers and four arms. Alright, I'm going to sleep for a few hours, and in the morning, we will see the final results. Wow, seeing all of this blue is going to make me cry tears of joy. This is by far one of the most fun experiences I have ever had with LEGO. Believe it or not, the 501st Specialist Battle Pack is the first battle pack I've bought more than 5 of. So this is really a new feeling to me and my wallet. And while one of us is enjoying it more than the other, I cannot think of a more beautiful sight. Well, I can, but this is pretty dang beautiful. As beautiful as this is, I like giving back to you guys, the people who watch until the end of the video. So I will be selling all of these clones on Whatnot starting at only $1 each, as well as some accessory packs with the macros and some other awesome items. Make sure you do not miss it. The link to the auction and a free $10 when you sign up on Whatnot is in the description of this video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like for the sakes of my wallet and everything else. and. I will see you all in the next video. Hope you all enjoyed. Have an amazing day.